Good evening everyone. Today topic is about chronic kidney disease, mineral bone disease, also called as CKD, MBD. This video will act as an overview for the MD residents for them to go through the topic in detail. First we will see what is the definition of this CKD MBD. It is nothing but a systemic disorder of bone and mineral metabolism due to CKD manifested by either one or more of the following. Previously it was called as renal osteodystrophy. But as per the latest guidelines they have changed and included this definition. Nothing but systemic disorder of bone and mineral occurring in CKD patient which can manifest as one or more of the following. First there might be abnormalities of the things which are controlled by the kidney. There might be problem in the calcium, phosphorus, parathyroid hormone level, FGF23 and vitamin D metabolism. Or abnormalities of the bone in the form of mineralization, turnover or its strength. Third, even the any kind of soft tissue calcification including the vessels. So the proper definition, what is it? It is nothing but a systemic disorder of bone and mineral metabolism occurring in CKD patient which manifest as either abnormality of the biochemical parameters or abnormalities in the bone or any soft tissue calcification. So this is the clear cut latest definition. We are not using the term renal osteodystrophy because the CKD MBD encompasses these abnormal clinical situation so that is why they have changed it from renal osteodystrophy to the CKD mineral bone disease because this is also the manifestation which is having a clinical impacts it increases the morbidity it increases the mortality that's why this definition is being used next before going into the pathophysiology the pathophysiology is simple what happens if you take the if we take the endocrine function of the kidney, active form of vitamin D is being formed in the kidney. What does the active form of vitamin D does? It absorbs the calcium. So it is having a very important role in the calcium and phosphorus homeostasis. So why this CKD mineral bone disease occurs? The major problem in CKD is the kidneys are losing its function. So the active form of vitamin D won't form vitamin D level goes down because of which calcium level goes down what happens to the filtration capacity of kidney that also goes down so what happens to the phosphorus phosphorus level increases because of which this will stimulate the parathyroid gland to increase the PTS level so there will be a hyperparathyroidism this is the more four important problems occurring in CKD in simple terms even a UG student can understand so calcium goes low phosphorus becomes high because the patient is not able to excrete a particular yeah, excessive load of phosphorus So to make the pathophysiology a little bit more clear, kidney, this is the normal situation where kidney controls the homeostasis of the calcium, vitamin D is there and phosphorus it normally excretes. So it acts on the re receptors in the parathyroid gland. So when cal vitamin D acts on the vitamin D receptor in the parathyroid gland, there is no much stimulation when the calcium acts on calcium sensing receptor. There is no stimulation. When phosphorus, if it gets high, it stimulates the bone to secrete FGF23. Osteoclast secretes this. Osteocyte secretes this FGF23 where there will be what this FGF23 do. FGF23 is having two major role. It decreases the phosphorus level by, by, by increasing its excretion in the kidney. And it also act directly it suppresses the parathyroid gland. So this is the normal scenario where kidney having regular amount of calcium phosphorus it is managing everything. 
but what happens in CKD? There is low calcium, low vitamin D, so it won't act on parathyroid, so it won't suppress, so the parathyroid secretion increases. Because of excessive phosphorus, there is a continuous secretion of FGF23. Because of the continuous presence, it acts on the receptor, but it won't respond to FGF23 because of the continuous presence. So the inhibitory control on the PTH is lost. So there is an excessive PTH secretion, which leads to hyperparathyroidism. So what happens when the parathyroid hormone goes up? It causes erosion of the bone because parathyroid tries to increase the calcium level by activating the resorption in the bone. And it also pushes the phosphorus out. Basically, it is a homeostasis mechanism. But this homeostasis mechanism, because of the hyperparathyroidism, that is damage to the bones. Previously, the name given to this kind of bone abnormality was renal osteodystrophy. Even the name itself is self-explanatory. Kidney, bone, dystrophy is nothing but the loss of the tissue, whatever it is. So abnormality. Because of the kidney problem, there is a bone abnormality. So alteration of the bone morphology in CKD patient because of the some hormonal imbalance, secondary hyperparathyroidism. So previously this is called as renal osteodystrophy. Now because of including other parameters like abnormality of the biochemical parameters and even the calcification can occur. That's why the term was changed into CKD mineral bone disease. So till here, I hope it is clear. If you didn't understand the previous chart, uh, flow chart or previous diagram, just remember calcium goes down, phosphorus goes high. So there is a stimulation of the parathyroid gland to secrete parathyroid hormone. So pathophysiology is as simple as, as this homeostatic mechanism is abnormal, parathyroid hormone is being secreted. So what is this TMV system? Since the bones are going for some kind of abnormality, they have introduced the system called bone turnover, bone mineralization, bone volume. Based on these parameters, they started classifying the bone manifestation. Mineralization, volume and the turnover. So these three parameters can be affected because of the low calcium, low vitamin D, high phosphorus, high parathyroid hormone. So because of which five kind of manifestation can occur. One is first one which is more common is osteitis fibrosa cystica. It occurs typically due to secondary hyperparathyroidism there is excessive excessive pth there is a excessive turnover bone resorption occurs there will be formation of multiple small small cysts inside the bone bone became fibrosed perit peritrabecular fibrosis are common sometimes the patient mineralization is more affected there, where their manifestation is like osteomalacia, a dynamic bone disease. What happens here? The patient is on treatment. You give excessive calcium to the patient. The parathyroid is totally suppressed. If parathyroid hormones are not there, what happened? There won't be any bone resorption. It became bones became like a thick shock. It is more prone for fracture. Basically, there is no parathyroid hormone because of the excessive calcium excessive vitamin d and sometimes patient will be having a mixed picture the patient will be having both the kind of manifestation like mineralization will be low turnover will be low some kind of mixed picture and last one is the beta 2 microglobulin related amyloidosis which is more common in hemodialysis patient where these kind of beta 2 microglobulin get deposited in the tendons and all which causes Carpal tunnel syndrome, some kind of amyloidosis related manifestation. This is not related to calcium and phosphorus, but since it is related to CKD causing some kind of calcification, some kind of deposition, they have mentioned here. So these are all the four important manifestations which can occur because of the parathyroid hormone, calcium phosphorus level, 
and fifth one is beta 2 microglobulin amyloidosis why did i have mentioned it here because it is a part of ckd mbd a broad spectrum description of this one so that's why they have given it regarding the beta 2 microglobulin amyloidosis we will see in a separate video to complete the topic proper that's why i have mentioned it here so next so we have seen four kind of manifestation osteitis fibrosis cystica osteomalacia a dynamic bone disease and mixed thing so look at in this chart one is osteitis fibrosis cystica whenever there is a hyperparathyroidism when the parathyroid hormone is so high it goes for osteitis fibrosis cystica you give calcium calcitriol aluminium previously it is a part of dialysis the patients are at risk of exposure to aluminium when the water quality is not good when the patient take aluminium containing antacids there is a chance of excessive calcium when the excessive calcium is there the parathyroid hormone level goes down because mostly hydrogenic causes it goes for a low bone turnover so look at the spectrum here so look at the spectrum here if the parathyroid hormone is high it goes for osteitis fibrosis cystica when the parathyroid is low it goes for a dynamic bone disease a dynamic means there is no turnover there is no osteoclast there is no osteobladder it is like a chalk it just breaks in between there is a mixed kind of picture so these are all the manifestation and the spectrum hyper this arrow shows the effect of hyperparathyroidism so to keep it simple what might be the clinical feature the patient presents with bone pain the patient present with fracture excessive weakness at what stage occur it can occur at any stage it is more common as the gfr goes below 50 for a mcq point of view there will be a particular mcqs like what is the vitamin d level normal level what is the normal ipth level normal calcium phosphorus at what egfr it occurs those and all i am not discussing this video just for your theory uh, questions once you understand this you can better study from any textbook so that you can easily go through the topic so clinical flight features is nothing fracture bone pain fracture can occur with the trivial injury trivial trauma and unexplained bone pain back pain these are all the clinical feature and in the x-ray you might see a multiple cyst excessive mineralization loss some mcq related to this is because of the secondary hyperparathyroidism there might be presence of brown tumor paravertebral fractures are common femur fractures are common so next to what are the investigation to pick it up since everything is related to the calcium phosphorus vitamin d levels we have to get the levels done and also ipth level you have to get fgf mostly clinical practice we are not using but FGF23 also an important mediator in this uh, CKD MBD X-ray to look for any fibrous and cystic lesion DEXA to know the mineralization kidney function test basically to know whether the patient is at a, which stage of CKD and what, to confirm what is required bone biopsy Coming to the management, management is simple. Once you know the pathophysiology of CKD MBD, what we have to treat, we have to make sure patient calcium, phosphorus, vitamin D, and IPTH are in the normal level. And as we all know, CKD patients are prone for acidosis. Acidosis increases the bone resorption. So if the patient is in CKD stage 3, try to maintain the calcium, phosphorus, IPTH level in the normal range. Treat the vitamin D deficiency. If phosphorus is sky high, give phosphate binders restrict the phosphorus in the diet as the stage progresses further to ckd stage 4 and stage 5 there is a more chance these abnormalities are common so what we have to do we have to start giving active form of vitamin d don't treat excessively with the calcium you have to monitor the calcium don't give calcium to all the patient don't give vitamin d to all the patient because they are prone for a dynamic bone disease so if the parathyroid hormone is so high 
if there is excessive osteitis fibrosis cystica type of lesion we have to remove the parathyroid gland so parathyroidectomy might be required we have to give dialysis to reduce the phosphorus level calcium hematic to reduce the parathyroid level and here the dialysate sodium is nothing but we have to maintain the calcium level in the patient so that is what they are mentioning over here this is just a summary but if we have to discuss in detail regarding the phosphate binders they have to discuss regarding the newer drug what is the target level target level is less than 5 milligram we have to target for phosphorus and uh, what is the target of calcium this and all we have to discuss in detail but for the md theory exam this overall understanding if you have in ckd mbd the management is simple maintain the calcium level maintain the phosphorus level replace active form of vitamin d don't let the parathyroid to reach very high levels don't let it go to very low levels also so this is just a overall management so whenever the patient might present it with low mineralization also so whenever there is a low mineralization this chart just i showed for osteoporosis you can reduce the resorption or you can increase the bone formation with the help of ipts and vitamin d the synthetic form thiriparatide or reduce the resorption by using this phosphonate denosumab strim estrogen calcitonin why i told about osteoporosis if the patient is having that manifestation then those kind of treatment might be required basically maintain the calcium phosphorus vitamin d ipth level lifestyle changes and phosphate binder in the form of oral drug might be required and you have to be very clear the treatment depend on the particular manifestation whether the patient is having osteitis fibrosis or cystica or patient is having mixed renal osteodystrophy or patient is a dynamic bone disease so we have to manage according to the manifestation but overall the management is just to maintain these biochemical parameters under control other things which respect to ckd mbd the mcq points at what gfr what occurs what is brown tumor why the fgf23 is important what is the mechanism of fgf23 let and all we 